<laughs> yep. <laughs> the Bland National is back. This 1986 Grand National has been off the road for 20 plus years now. I did get it running. We found this thing up in a barn, but our hopes of putting it back on the road were dashed when we ran into brake problems, specifically the Power Master Super Electrotronic Hydraulicals brake system on this thing. But I think I have the fix. I've got an entire Hydro Boost brake kit for this car, and I'm hoping we can get this thing back on the road, drive it finally, and we might even pressure wash it. You have almost, almost talked me into it. Let's dig in. Now I'll get to show you a little bit later, but a guy has been working away on this, you know, in the ground that's back. It's not in the foreground. We've got new shock laters on it. We've got a three inch single exhaust system now, instead of the one into two muffler thing. Big old three inch, got rid of the cat. It's got a Flowmaster FX on it. Sounds much more good or better than it did before. We've got a new fuel tank and a new fuel pump, which is gonna resolve, boy, we fought that, didn't we? Remember that? Woo, woo. Anywho, on to brakes. If you've never heard of Hydro Boost brakes, well, let's go through it a little bit. You've got vacuum brakes. That's a common swap on these. You could put in some base wriggle vacuum brakes with an electric pump that makes vacuum. Some just take the risk and plummet right into the intake, but it's a boost car, right? So you're building and dropping vacuum. So that's, there's science and things there. I decided to go with the Hydro Boost kit. Now, basically, this is the main unit here. It's got a bunch of pipes, hoses, and doodabs. And then you've got your typical a master cylinder that goes right on the front of this guy here. Now, how this builds pressure is it actually uses the power steering pump, and that power steering pump not only supplies pressure to the power steering gearbox rack doodab, well, not necessarily a rack, just a gearbox, it also slings that pressure up into this here thing, that into the brakes, hydro boost brakes. Now, another thing about this is, since this unit is changing, all of the pedal geometry and angularizationals and there's math, geometry involved. You have to hang a new pedal in there, see? So this angle is the correct relationship to this guy. So basically we need to undo everything that I already undid to redo, to undo, to put back into place. We're undoing the dude to put the new in. So first step, crawling into the car, removing the pedal assembly, putting this pedal assembly in, but I already got a massive problem. Great. You see a guy went ahead and rolled the seat forward. It's electro-digital. I wanted to see if I could get to the bolts and what this was gonna look like. And immediately the gear drive on this thing blew into 37,912 pieces. And I ain't kidding. What I'm trying to tell you is the seat is absolutely stuck in the forwardmost position, which is the absolutely worst position it could be in, not only for pedal access, that ain't gonna happen. I mean, just look at my leg, you know what I mean? Also, I can't get to the front seat bolts at all. So what I've done here is I've been working away on this, I took apart the switch, which was already broken, unfortunately, and I learned all the pins here and what the switch orientation does for the wiring. And I can get the motors to click, but like I said, parts of the assembly have just blown into pieces. The riser gear, there's like a little basket that turns the rod, has stripped. There's a left motor and a right motor. They only click, they're done. So I really don't know what I'm gonna do. What I do know is the seat has to come out for me to lay in here 
to get the pan out and the pedal assembly. Remember the Firebird we just went through? Yeah. So this is not going to be good. Also, this is extremely rusty, the back bolt. Look at that. I mean, terrible, terrible shape. So this is our first big challenge. It's probably going to get really ugly. Look at this stuff. Like this is the alarm system hanging down. We got buttons. We got lights. There's a phone system in here. Unfortunately, this one kind of got kind of got boogered up a little bit. But if you don't remember this car, haven't seen that video yet, there's a link down in the description. You can watch me getting this thing running. 132,000 mile, 86 Grand National. And unfortunately, just cold storage really did a number on it. Really, really did a number on it. But we'll bring her back around. We'll do something with it. We just gotta get these brakes going. So here's the plan. I don't have one. Ooh, we got candy. How old is this? Sassy Sours. So I think where I'm gonna start is taking out the rear bolts, or at least trying. That way, we can feel like we've accomplished something. But we're still gonna be stuck with 17 bolts going through the front here. Seems fine. Well, it's not this size. So now we know that. I was just checking. Well, a little update here. One has successfully come loose. The leastest or rustiestest. This one is now shaped like watermelon. That one is completely frozen. And the farthest one is just, she's rounded off like a roundabout. So everything is going, you know, as planned thus far. We're, we're monkeying around with this because we need brakes. Makes sense. I got that one off because I could fit the ratchet in there. This one, I just, the plastic is snapping off everywhere. But I finally got the ratchet on this one. Oh, Corpus Christi. Hopefully that's turning and not stripping. Oh, I think it went. Okay, too loose. Oh, it's already new. Everything's going fine. Go ahead and picture a block. The guy's been around it quite a few times. I know where this is headed. <laughs> it's not good. If you've got a driver's side, i.e. captain's side seat, to a Grand National. Let me know. I'm gonna need it. What is this? That's the biggest dandy long legs I've ever, dandy, daddy long legs I've ever seen. <sighs> Joining the party. There we go. All four in the rear are out. Seems fine. Welcome to Derek's non-fictional storytelling time. I was going to lean the head under here and thinking, well, maybe a guy can just try one more time to, you know, try to get these motors motorizing. So naturally, I put my hand here to lean under the seat. Boom! Just exploded. There's nothing left of that bracket. Done. Okay, so we got three out now. This is a factory option. It's the auto seat delete. You could tell you have it if it does that. So now, I mean, the seat tracks are already shot. So I'm thinking maybe I just, do we just pry and bend on the other side too? Oh yeah, look at this. This one's rotten. That one's rotten. There's nothing left of it. Safe, real safe. Beep, 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 open wide. Boy, it's hotter than Martina McBride in here and I ain't kidding you. How does a guy, is this how you remove a seat? I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I never got my seat-o-matic degree. 
think I spin these by hand now? Everything is busted under here. Oh, wow. Yep. There's more seat motor parts. They're just showering down. Well, I is this side going to want to hold up now? Is that what you're telling me? The one side that isn't rusted through. Help me understand why that's the side. <sighs> I can't get leverage. I can't get the seat back. I can't get the seat forward. Does this do anything? No, it's just feeling my retinas and stuff. Is it bending it? Uh, heat, heat, heat. I didn't realize the headliner was sagging my bad on this one. Add to the list a visor. If you got a visor for a Grand National, let me know. I can't get a torch in here though. This thing would go up like a old Christmas tree. What are my other options? Hmm. I don't know. This is this is pretty fun. I don't know. I wonder what Tracy Lawrence is doing today. Get out of there. Get out of there. I tried to warn you. I am your father. <laughs> Nothing. easy. Simple process. Well, if you're wondering why the seat motors weren't motoring, um, I believe this is the, yeah, see? Like I spin it by hand and the track turns. I'm sure I could do the same here. Although that doesn't do us a lick of good now, does it? I'm sure there might be a way to unlock these. No, nope. doubtful very. But the tracks were just, I, wonder, I think I might be able to just replace this piece and then everything. No, you're right. Probably just easier to get another USC. days later guys got her licked out looks pretty good actually minus the rusty seat provision areas don't worry about that carpets in decent shape though now we have room to lay in here and actually get to the pedal which <laughs> ironically that's the tough part and let's go ahead and address the cow in the room what did we learn here well fellers I'll tell you this much if a seat is in the back position and you're going to take said seat out. Do the front bolts first. Then move the seat forward to get to the back. Don't assume it's going to go back because, well, they just don't always do that. So that's the pin I was after. By the who and way, we're laying up, side down, head first here. But, smartly, I left that rod out of the master cylinder or the power master unit so we don't have to take that pin out 
Now we just gotta take that bolt and nut out up there and the whole pedal assembly, this guy, will come out and we can put the new one in. Well, the guy did get the old pedal out and I think the key to that actually was these longer wrenches. See how long they are? Ratcheting wrenches. So I was able to, you know, stabilize them way up under there. But here's what I'm talking about as far as the geometry. Boy, there's that brake pedal squeak. Shoot. Anywho's. Here's the geometry. That's where that pedal was pushing into the master cylinder. Here's where this one is going to be way down here. Big difference. And that's why you got to change the pedal out for that new assembly. So I got some of this uh, Master Pro grease, greased up the ends here. It's a really tight fit up in that bracket tray. So I'm going to be able to hopefully jam that in new hardware, get that tightened up. And once the pedal goes back in, then we can actually start on disassembly of the power master unit, master cylinder lines. And there's a whole lot of disassembly on the engine. Unfortunately, I think we're gonna have to do as well. It's gonna be pretty in depth. I don't even wanna talk about it, but the pedal is in. This is the cruise control switch we gotta remount and the brake light switch, which I have zip tied so the brake lights don't stay on and kill the battery. But that is in. Bentley had to come in and lay on my chest, hold light up there. And then I used uh, two box end wrenches, ratcheting wrenches. And that seems to be the way to go, fellas. All right, under the hood. Hood prop 300. Well, next we gotta get under here and actually start doing something. Everything to this point didn't mean nothing. That's great. That goes there if I remember right. That goes there. Perfect. That's a lot of duct tape. Wasteful. Anyway, time to get the brake master out of this thing. Now, the construction say a guy should, you know, take out just this portion and then the power master unit, but if I remember correctly, when we were working on this in that barn, a guy just latched onto the whole unit and took her out. I think I'm gonna do that again. Why? I don't know. I did it once, we can do it again. Connector, connector, line, line. And then there's four bolts on the inside on the firewall I gotta get off. But before I start, let's go ahead and suckalize this old juice out of here. Well, actually it's not old, this should be, this should be new juice. Beer, beer, papa, dear, dear, beer. Bada, pa, papa, dear, beer. I don't remember how to use this machine. I think we just drop this in the juice. Turn this on. Okay, that's pretty well empty. You know what? We might as well do the PS reservoir while we're at it. Alright, just dunk it in. Oh wow, it's gonna need a change anyway. It's like maroon. Looks like a good bourbon. Mm, bourbon. <laughs> yeah. Alright, tanks are dry. I got uh, this connector off, this connector off. This line here worried me for a second, but it just goes down to the base unit again. So. I think all I have to do is just disconnect these two, if I remember right, and then the four on the firewall, which I have to crawl under the car again, and uh, take those four nuts out, then I can just grab this whole unit and take it out in one shot. Then comes the big, big job. There's a power steering pump in here, way down there, can't even see it. And those lines go to a gearbox down here that you can't see also. Basically all of this here, all of this needs to come out just so I can swap a line or two and we can start running some lines. So I'm not sure once I get this unit out, I think I might take all this garbly gook out as well and then we'll start reassembly at once. Might also change on some lightning hoses while we're in here. 
I know I got new sparkulators in when we got her fired, but now would be a good time to check for the manifold and cracks, anything like that. Anything else we can do while we got this stuff out of the way. Let me contort myself, break my back, put three kinks in my neck, lay upside down, lose blood pressure, almost puke twice. Get those four nuts off quick so we can start getting this out. They should come right out, yeah, since we already, yeah, we already went through this dance. Although that was a while ago. Boy, was that like a year ago already? Maybe. I don't know. I bought a kit for this and then got scammed by a company I won't mention, but excuse after excuse, and then supposedly their building burnt down and they couldn't figure out shipping, and then issue with the master cylinder, and finally months after begging, I got my money back. Then we went and got this other kit from a different company. And that's how we ended up where we're at taking so long. Okay, those are off. Now, if I got all of them, <laughs> the elusive power master great design one out of a thousand work today pretty much this here believe it or not as a core is probably worth five six hundred dollars so i'm going to set this aside and uh, we can potentially have this rebuilt or something like that or scoot it down the line to somebody else that may need this thing so like I was saying, I think I'm going to go ahead and get in here and replace the lightning hoses because if I remember right, yep, see these are all crumbling, falling apart, and now's the time. We got the room. If I had a super amount of patience, now would be the time to put a valve cover gasket on this thing. Nope, we'll just let that leak for a while, you know what I mean? Look how much room we gain with that thing out of here. Moses sandals. Ugh. How do you run these things? Oh, like that. So I got some lightning hoses sitting up there. I'm super cheap. I mean, <laughs> cheap. So those are the same ones I bought for this car a long time ago. Just threw them in the trunk. You know what I mean? Ugh. So, go ahead and see if we can replace some of these. Now, I think this is for a standard Regal, because it's got a cap in the box. It's like a tune-up kit kind of deal. But it's, it's going to work just fine. Okay. Better than the broken-in-half boot. That was in there. Come on now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing the ignition system in this still works just fine. That's a bonus. I shouldn't have said that, should have I? I realize it now. Mistakes were made. Okay. Well, they're either too short or way too Way too short, or too short, or what, too long, otherwise. Okay. One more. Ouch! More blood! Oh, that's all right. Worth it. Hey, okay, these are the super shorts. That's, that one's 50 feet long. That's the one I'm going to have to use, though, I think. I think things are happening here. Still absolutely nothing to do with brakes, but, you know, nonetheless, things are happening. There we go. Slick. Uh-oh. Am I out of juice on this already? I can't believe it. So something I was noticing on this is the hardware is just free floating. And that's going to make it very difficult to install by myself in the car. So I'm putting a tack weld on the washer and the bolt itself. 
So these stay like that, like a stud. So when I push it into the firewall, I can at least get underneath, put some nuts on it, and get them started. Otherwise, I'm back and forth, back and forth. Like you guys at home, I work alone 99.99736547892 repeating percent of the time. You just got to find ways like this to make it easier on yourself. Well, I got them welded in there. Only one is significantly crooked. That's pretty good, you know, passing grade, three out of four. Now I'm on to the seal, which this is off the Power Master system. And as you can tell up here, its job is to prevent ingress of incremental weather or bad weather or weather that's not weather. It's supposed to be in the cabin. It's blo it blocks rain stuff. I don't have a gasket for this, so I'm gonna take some RTV and run it around the bolts and then a nice bead around this. So when we plop that into the car, we can hopefully prevent moisture and water from dropping right into the car, rotting the firewall out behind us. Will it even fit? Probably not. Watch out there, little liar. Oh. Butter. Kind of. Something's, something snagging up. I don't know what it is. Oh, I'm already hooked on the pedal. Wow, that was crazy. I somehow just hooked this on the pedal as I was putting it in there. <laughs> I'll be damned. So instead of using this hardware, I use the original hardware. This is uh, your standard flat washer, split washer, or lock washer, and nut. The original hardware was a Teflon nut or plastic insert nut, and then I didn't have to fork in all those washers and stuff. It just made it a lot easier. Anyway, that is in and 100% bolted up, done, ready to rock. I think really quick, I'm gonna go ahead and fight putting in the washer and the pin because then the pedal assembly essentially and the hydro boost unit is 100% done. We don't have to worry about any of that, basically. Leaving the master cylinder off at that point, I think we'll start digging into this. I've gotta take off the intake, the charge pipe, the intercooler, the air box, the belt, probably an either pulley, maybe even the charger whirler and ice cube juice pump. Not sure, I gotta get enough access in there to get the high pressure line off of the power steering pump, which is the farthest down. Well, it should show right here. This guy down here, well, it's not even on here. Alternator. Idler, yeah, I guess that's it. Power steering pump. That's what we're after. Don't ignore all the rust. That's fine. there I got all this tore out basically just the air box and all the piping and the intercooler and I think I'm gonna throw a new snake belt on her while we're at it mazel this thing is we, we know is you know a couple decades old but look at this not very efficient the other side is the same so I'm gonna take the pressure washer wash that up get that nice and clean I'll be fogger down with some DE 1635 same with the air box Need to get an air cleaner in this thing that is well not good all of that work basically so we can get to that fitting right there that's the high pressure line out of the ps pump which comes in down here so that line we're going to be replacing because essentially we're going to be sending it up to the hydro boost back down here and then we need to t the return line to the reservoir right here. We need to tee that, and that's also gonna be going back there. So we need access to that port and these fittings here, and I think we got it, finally. I may also replace that idler pulley. It's not in terrible shape. It seems to be rolling okay, but boy, I'd hate to do all this again 
just to put that in on the future. Water pump might not be a bad idea, but you know, sometimes she only needs what she needs, fellers. I think that pump is just fine. So I'm gonna lay the lines out here in a minute, but I've basically stared this down long enough. I think I've got it. We're gonna go from the pump over to this inlet, high pressure, high pressure out over there to the rack. And then the return from the reservoir, we're gonna tee off there and take that back to the return on the hydro boost. That would be the lines that we have to run the most difficult, well, probably the one to the power steering pump because I can get to this one easy enough. I'm gonna open the kit, throw it up on the boot back there, take a look at it. Should have all the fittings and whatnots to make this happen. I might start test fitting those and figure out which fitting goes where and then we could start cutting up line and making it. So here we have our two 74 kajillion PSI lines that we need to cut to fit. And then the fittings for them here, which I don't think I've ever done. These are similar to AN, I guess. We'll figure it out. And then this is a push lock style stuff here for the low pressure return. Got a couple bendy doo dabbers, which I think one side is actually just a push on. Uh, the hydro boost so they must be assuming we're going to be putting it fitting into the gearbox and putting this onto there which we technically don't need to do there's already a fitting in it and line coming out i may just use new line and clamps put the t in t into the rubber and then take the rubber right to the hydro boost and not have to put any new fittings in you following what i'm hanging up in the tree here yeah i don't me either well, I got that high pressure line out and off of there, only busted my knuckle three times, so that's good. Now I gotta put connectors in here so we can make the lines. I don't know what I'm doing, but I can match things up. You know what I mean? So this fitting looks like the other line with the fitting over it in the O-ring. And this should go in the pump. And sure enough, the biggest fitting in the bag is the only one that screws in there. So <laughs> that's gotta be that one, I'm guessing. Now we just got to start the process of reassembly. And as far as hose routing, no idea. Zero instructions included. Perfect. We don't need those anyway where we're going. I think I'm just going to run that one. I'm going to have a 90. So I'm going to try to... I don't know if I could sneak it behind that pump. Because the other one had a crazy... It went up, back, over, down, back, this way. Well, I'll show you. There's no way we're doing this with the rubber line and what we got is that so somehow I got to snake that through mock it up figure out my length pull it back out cut it snake it back through again I'm really not happy with this routing of this cable here but I don't have any other options because of the idler pulley that goes in front of it and I've got a 45 on this pre-made line I think this can come out of the way. I've got it down here marked and then this fitting hits the fender well. So that's as much room as I have there. It seems to be far enough away from the manifold. So now I'll take that line out and we'll cut it, prep it, and then install it again for the last time, hopefully. Nope, it's gonna leak everywhere. We'll have to do this again, let's be honest. So on this hose here, you'll see these marks. I had made marks where I clocked it basically because we need this end to be at a specific rotation. So this should hopefully end with that mark against that mark against that mark. So when we put this in, these are adjusted correctly and we're not twisting or putting a loop in the line, to try to get this lined up. Now to cut it, I just made a mark, put it in here flat, crunched it with the vise, and then I like to use a death wheel to cut this because there's a steel center or like a woven center on the inside of this, kind of like coaxial cable. And then the heat from the death wheel makes it melty as well. And then I take a nice sharp scissors and just trim it up, blow through it with brake clean or carb cleaner or something so there's no debris in here. And then we're going to go ahead and work this in. Now, it's a good idea to lube 
this portion right here because as we thread this in, that's going to be driving inside of the hose here. So I'm just going to use some of this um, Total Lube. Berman makes lubrication. You believe it? Well, you're looking at it. So it took every bit of 18 and a half minutes. No, 17 and three quarter just to get this line on. And this is why clocking is so important, is the orientation that this came in because there's no room. You can't be flopping lines and trying to put kinks and twists in it. And it was a nightmare, but I think I got her started down here now. That should hopefully be the worst one as far as the fittings go. The other two are over here where I got a little bit more room. It's not against the fender well. But this again is a high pressure line from the pump to the hydro boost unit. And the next one I suppose we'll do is high pressure from the hydro boost back to the gearbox. And then we'll be done with the high pressure side of it. I don't know how tight to put these, enough to where they leak, you know. Especially if we're gonna run decks in here, it's extremely flammable. And uh, obviously we've got a lot of pipage and hot stuff going on in here, so. Keeps things spicy. Sure. So the other hose here got started there. I think I'm going to go down. I'll go under the cable and the other line, but behind the hard lines on the brake, shoot through here, underneath the air box, loop back around, and then in this way because coming straight in is going to be too tight I think and I got enough line here it's probably going to be the best way and similar with that because I got to come off that nub there with the return so I don't want to come this way or up or any other direction because I'll get in the way of that and cross that up so this is probably going to be the best well we got the return line in there's a T right here, all new line clamps, and that return line comes up here into the hydro boost. So I think at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and put the master cylinder in. These are kind of like pegs. See, they screw into this unit, and then we'll run the nuts down tight on the backside. And then we gotta bendalize these to fit properly, because they used to come back into here, now you gotta bend them, try not to break them into that. And then we'll be getting pretty close to shutting down for the night. I'll probably, you know, powder coat these, pressure wash that out. And I'm going to go ahead and take the alternator, the charging whirler out. That bearing is getting close to going. So I ordered a charging whirler, an idler pulley, and a snake belt. Those will be in tomorrow morning. But we can get this out, I guess. I'm going to need that for the core anyway. $26. I can... It's just getting out of hand and we'll have everything ready for reinstallation but at least get the master cylinder mounted here well the next problem i got is this huh that don't look right oh wait there so i don't know i guess i'm gonna have to move this temporarily permanently something like that and figure out where it lands once that master cylinder is in there. I hate to move it too far, um, but it's got to go forward probably an inch at least. Well, the mess continues. With this out of the way, and this approximately where it's going to go, allegedly, the lines are way out of whack, and the bracketry is in direct competition for real estate with the rear line there. So now I gotta take this bracket off. I should loosely mount that in. See if I'm gonna snap these off first, then figure out what to do with that mess and all of the lines I just did, well, they're probably gonna have to be redone. Okay, I think I got it all figured out for now, and then we'll change it later. Had to disconnect the return line and the T's and all this. To be able to move the reservoir, forward enough set that back in got that where I think it needs to go this is the original bracketry I'm going to cut this all up and make something custom 
to mount on the fender well and hold that tank. Then we'll have to replumb the return lines, just like we said I would. I already spun the original fit and around. I think we'll have to loop this way now. Stay out of the way of the air box and the intercooler. And back into the T. Oh. Well, master cylinder bolted in, and I got the lines bent where they just barely, barely install. Pop them back out because we need to bleed the system. Now, some of you probably noticed, hey, wait a minute. I never bled that before I put it on the rig. And well, if you've watched the show long enough, you know that I don't do it that way because we could do it right here. And then it's easier and less of a mess. So this little kit came with it. And basically when we're gonna slowly pump the brakes, it's gonna be pushing fluid out right back into the reservoir. When I release the pedal, it's gonna let air travel out. And we're gonna keep doing that until we have no air bubbles. Now, if you're not lucky enough to get one of the kit, Performance Tools makes one. You can get this at O'Reilly's. They're super cheap. They're like six bucks or something like that. And it'll do essentially the same thing here. So I'm going to go ahead and work that pedal nice and slow. Try to get the bubbles out of this thing. And uh, we might even be able to bleed the brakes tonight if I talk Jessica into helping me. And then tomorrow we can do all that stuff. I'm just excited to have brakes. We just got to be careful not to run the reservoirs dry. That's those air bubbles we want to work out of the system. See right there, I can just rock the pedal at the top, get some air out. Talk to my wife Jessica into helping me bleed the brakes. We've been doing this many, many years, haven't we? <laughs> So I got her jacked up on jack stands. She's gonna bust the wheels off. These are a little tricky. These hub, or lug nuts have these little decorative caps on them and they're all mangled up in different sizes. But for me, it's just easier to pull the tires off, bleed them that way I can look for any leaks and stuff like that. And if I remember right, I got a bunch of these lines cobbled together. So I'll make sure they're not leaking or bursting under pressure. But that's what that system looks like on and bled. Sticker's still on the tire. Down there. Oh, funny. Where do you want these to go? Yeah, let's throw it over there. Oh, yeah. Hello, old friend. All right, five times and hold. Lots of air. Good news. Wheel cylinder's already moving. Again? Again. All right, let me switch sides. Is it building pressure already? Good. Well, how's the pedal feel? Super hard. I think it's good. Nice. How do you like my seat? I mean, flannel material? Pretty good. You know, I can't see. Good job. Another one bled. Okay. I think I'm going to, while well, I got this busted off, I got a powder coat frame, front and rear, mozzle, original tag on there. Clean that up a little bit, put a rust converter on it, spray it down, and then we'll get the tires and wheels back on. Remember how this one was really beat up and I had a hard time mounting it? Well, it did a number on the rubber. We got a pimple. So we're gonna have to get some wheels for the Grand National, unfortunately. I'll probably get lookalikes. The original wheels are something fiercely expensive and well, it doesn't really, you know, matter that much. Well, thanks for helping once yeah. again. All right, I'll get the cheek poker. Let's get after it. Rebuilding frame, rebuilding. Whoa, oh, it's getting squirrely. Oh, see? Get some of the scale off. Put 
looking good. So I'm just going to miss some rust treat in here. It goes on clear, but it'll turn a black color when it's finished attacking the surface rust here. It's not a permanent fix. It just slows it down like my fuel line here. Let's go ahead and spritz that too. On the wheel wall houses, there's the dog houses here, I'm going to use a rubberized undercoating from uh, Duplicolor. It goes on, you've seen me use it a billion times. I mean, I could spray it from back here and it just will fog that in. And then DE 1634 or 1635, kind of a flatter semi-gloss black on this. Rebuild the brakes with that as well. And this is going to look brand new in just a second here. I don't know, this stuff just kind of goes on clear. See? You just make a mess of it. Get it on there and let it eat. And it'll just start turning black and that's when you know it's activated. Or whatever, I don't know, there's science that happens, I'm sure. There's something in it, you know? But we'll get it up in here. Down in here. Get my lines. Let this dry for a second and then we'll come back and give her some color. Actually, while this is drying, I'll go hit the other side. Sandblast the other side, you know what I mean? Pretty incredible what some rattle can restoration will do. Also coated the fuel tank down. That was just a raw tank with this uh, stainless steel stuff here by Samor 316L. I don't know, I like this stuff for transmissions, cases, transfer cases, stuff like that, fuel tanks. It looks legit and it's got real metal in her, believe it or not. Okay, the fronts are all dolled up as well as the rears. Let's go ahead and get the tires and wheels back on this thing. She is raining cats and kittens out. Might be a little noisy in here for a bit. Got the tires and wheels back on. Of course, nothing changed there other than the Craigslist rebuilt behind them. Gonna move on to the bracket try for the reservoir here. So this is the original bracket that holds that reservoir on and it had this angle to it and this is where it mounted over in the center. I just added a piece of steel, ain't pretty, it's going to work and uh, punch a new hole. So that's going to offset it and bring it over to where now we can mount that reservoir again right in front of the master cylinder here and then we can finish up this T, get that plumbed into the gearbox. And that's the last line for the Hydro Boost. Gumdrops and dinosaurs and ants with no legs. These are a few of my favorite things. Hopefully this bracket try works. I don't see why it wouldn't. Looking good, Bobby. There, the reservoir is officially installed. <laughs> well, got all the lines finished. Kind of ran them around this base. That's where the air cleaner base is going to sit in there. Speaking of which, I got that in the powder coating booth. It's drying. Got out the charger whirler quick. That was just a couple bolts. And this still hasn't come in yet. And the other part, so I need to... Waste a little bit of time. Got the battery on boil because, of course, that's that's already down. Nothing new there. Let's go work on the seat a little bit. So this thing is pretty well trashed. I mean, the feet are all messed up. The slides are now messed up. The motor. I think I can get these motor casings and try to put together the innards again. But I'm pretty sure I'm missing parts there even. So I'm probably going to be on the hunt for a whole new seat. But in the meantime. We gotta get this thing bolted to the floor so we can go for a test drive. Well, or just sit on a cooler, one of the two, that's plan B. So I'm gonna try to make some feet that come off of this that we can bolt down. I've kinda just cleaned it up right now. I'm gonna start marking out some designs, cut them out with the death wheel, and then we'll just weld them on here, spritz it up with some paint so they don't look like that in two days. And if all goes well, I'll have measured correctly and this thing will actually bolt back in. 
I just quick knock these little plates out. Pretty similar to the shape that, you know, Shea Ridge comes with. Gonna drill some holes in here, waller them out, and then we'll just weld these right to the tracks. That's kind of my plan. Just something simple and easy and uh, close to the original so it should line up and the elevation of the seat or the tiltage, I don't, it's, it should work is what I'm saying. brackets are done again not perfect but I think it's gonna do the job by the way to get these tracks up all I did was put a power drill on here and just spun it and it brought the tracks up right truth of moments is it gonna fit in the car it'd be nice if this just slipped right in there doubtful very but you never know okay yeah here we go. I'll just give you the play by play here. We got we got one sidage. Positive one sidage. I think I can make it work by golly. One side's a little bent up, but such is life. I'm a little bent up too. <laughs> well, there you go. Seed is in. It's kind of weird though, the seat's kind of twisted, almost like it was pried on with miscellaneous large objects or something, but we got a seat. Well, it's official. A winner has been randomly selected and verified to win the Buick Regal Mountain Dew car and $5,000 cash. Let's go ahead and give them a call right now. Hello? Hi, is this Megan? Yeah. Well, hey, fella. This is a guy at Vice Grip. How you doing? Good. How about you? I'm doing great. I was calling to congratulate you on winning the Mountain Dew car and five thousand dollars. How does it feel? Amazing. Kind of shocked. <laughs> yeah. I gotta ask. What Never did you win anything? Oh, you don't, huh? Well, you won big this time. What did you buy? I'm curious. I bought my husband's Father's Day gift. I got him like the gasoline shirt. Nice. And your. Uh, your uh, button-up shirt that you wear all the time. Yep. Nice. Couple <laughs> the shirts. Up one. Cool. You got big, yep. big plans for the car? I don't know. Drive it. And have We're fun. Hang on to it. That's for sure. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys can come pick it up down at the Freedom Factory in Florida. How's that sound? Sounds exciting. Awesome. <laughs> Very, very cool. Well, congratulations again. We'll stay in touch. If you have any more questions on it, you got my number now, so you could just give me a ring, okay? Cool. Oh, good. Awesome. Well, again, congratulations. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Well, there you have it. The winner is Megan G out of Michigan. Congratulations to her and her husband. I probably could get a few more miles out of this air cleaner, but I think we're going to go ahead and toss in a new one. Got me a charging whirler. This kind of reminds me of like the Corvette style cooler on here. But it's got the right amount of ribs, which you gotta pay attention to. Also the pins on your connector. Normally the older rigs are one or two pin. This is like a four pin, but it's only a one wire. I, it's, I don't know. Make sure you got the right doodabs and the whatnots, is what I'm saying. Had to reuse the old idler pulley. There is a new one on the way, but it's not here till tomorrow, and I really want to drive this thing. So we're going to throw that on. I got some hand towels for the bathroom, some silicone, and uh, new beltus. So we'll go ahead and get this mounted back in, get the snake belt back on, then we can start on everything else. The rain has let up for a couple minutes, so I hope that we can pressure wash the intercooler, get all this stuff nice and clean before we throw it back in here. All right, of course she ain't fitting very good, but she's already been beat on like a screen door, so this will be no different. Okay. That should about have us there. See?
That's looking pretty good. Charger Whirler's back in. Went ahead and threw the new snake belt on. This one's a little bit loose here, but I think it's going to work just fine. K060640, I believe is the part number. If that seems to be doing okay ish, we'll just keep an eye. If we get some slippage or some squealage, we could tighten her up just to tackle. Now I got to run the support arm, comes off the block down there, comes up to this tag, and this. Also bolts into that, if I remember correctly. Yep, something like that. And that's the right side support for the intercooler. There's the left side. So once I get that arm in, we gotta go out and wash that intercooler so we can start putting that back in and all the different piping. There's a lot of it. Bracketry is in. I had to use a new nut on this. I don't know, it was smoked for some reason, but now I'm gonna start working the air inlet side mass airflow sensor i got a new one i actually bought this well i guess it would be about a year ago for this car but it's just been sitting on the shelf i'm gonna go ahead and put that in start running the lines get the intercooler in which has been pressure washed and drying and then just start tidying all this stuff back up Well, hey, the Bland National is back together. We've got a hydro boost system in this now, new master cylinder. We cobbled in the old lines. We moved the reservoir over with a custom made bracket, powder coated the air box there, put a new air filter in it, new mass airflow sensor, cleaned up the intercooler, got that back installed, put on that new charge whirler and new snake belt. This thing is pretty much ready to rock. We are missing one vacuum line. I'm hoping it'll idle without it though. It's time to fire this thing up, saw the wheels, get all the air and foam out of the system, make sure that we've got, well, power brakes essentially, and the power steering still works. Worst case scenario, it looks like Yellowstone. Yosemite. Yos, Yos, Geyser Stone Park. The water that shoots out, you know what I'm talking about. We don't want that. Let's fire it up. Yes, come on now, Bland National, bring in the thunders. Fill pump prime. Oh, there we go. Like I said, we got a little bit of a vacuum leak here. I plugged out with my finger. Sounds pretty good. Hydro boost is nice and quiet. I was a little bit nervous about the noise there. I gotta let go of this vacuum leak. Oh yeah, doesn't like that at all. But that's quick. Oh, plenty of power steering. Wow, that's great. Digital fans kicked on, <laughs> how about that? Can't believe it, but I'm listening to it. Anywho, so I gotta run into town, pick up some vacuum line, let's drop this thing back on the ground, and finally, after 20 plus years, we can put this car back on the highway and go for a spin. I'm, I'm, uh, look at my face, I'm excited. vacuum cleaner leaks. This headliner is slightly inconvenient, but we're gonna live with it. But look at this. I can't believe I'm finally driving this car. It's such a great feeling. And you know, some of you might think it's a pile of junk. I get it, all right? But you know what? I'm happy with it. I work hard to get it. And a lot of you guys, listen, you, you 
you don't have to have a shiny rig and a bunch of money in it all the doodabs of whistles and chrome who cares go drive the thing and enjoy it and have fun and that's pretty much what I'm doing right now in the world's junkiest <laughs> world's junkiest Grand National the one and only Bland National I'm just kind of cruising right now this thing hasn't been on the road in so long letting everything kind of work Letting the oil and the rear get splashed around. The transmission seems to be shifting fine. Here in a minute, we'll throw some boostesses at it. See what happens. I have no idea. It could not go good. Which, boy, it sure feels zippy. Ooh, she's popping pretty good. Right there. There it goes. Whoa! Man, these things are quick. I've wanted one of these cars since I was a little boy. They were the baddest machine back then. And I tell you what, they still move. Yeah. <laughs> it breaks up a little bit still, but we gotta work on her, you know? This poor thing's been in a long nap. And now we're just throwing the turbo at it. We'll do a 45 roll here. Holy cow. Still breaking up a little, but it's getting better. seems to be going fine so far it's not getting hot I don't got an oil pressure gauge but I don't hear any tickety tackety or clickety clackety it's uh man it's starting to run really strong just the more I drive it you just got to bring them around get the cobwebs out of them I'm gonna keep cruising until dark basically it looks like I got headlights never really checked I got dash lights AC doesn't work fuel gauge is in and out I don't know what must be the cluster because the unit is new the rpm gauge is stuck wide open i like that the boost gauge works the speedometer works so we're just cruising right now letting this old girl just stretch its legs a little bit and i'm having a blast doing it running she's a little hot hey the bland national is officially back on the highway i cannot tell you how good it feels to just drive this car i've drank many a cold snacks and wobble pops next to this thing just planning and thinking about that moment and i had so much fun i didn't even check the lights until i was on the road i never turned the radio on or nothing i was just in the moment cruising having fun and that's what it's about with these classic cars now we've still got some things to work out on this thing obviously and dark is upon us unfortunately i'm not going to get to pressure wash it and clean it up to paint tonight but it's coming soon we'll pressure wash this thing we'll clean it up got some ideas on the paint we've got to swap out the wheels they're all bent and beat up and the rubber's barely hanging on we've got some issues with the engine still it's breaking up not making full boost could be a vacuum leak i'm not really sure Seems like it's running really rich, so I've got to take a look at that. If you guys have anything else you want to see with the Bland National, bleep bloop it down there below. And hey, did you know there's a Bland National t-shirt? Yeah, over at vicegripgarage.com if you want to show your support for this old guy here. Thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate it very much. We'll see you very soon.